hello family hello hello colleagues um you guys are welcome to uh, a section on uh, um a section on the human um a session on the human body all right and on the human body you guys know that we have the upper limb we have the lower limb we have the pelvis, we have the perineum, we have the thorax, we have the abdomen, all right? We have the face, we have the head. Can you see we have so many things? Then we have the neuroanatomy. Okay, guys, so um, this video is actually like a sweep through, like a wave. You understand? Like we got a wave, poof, true the upper limb okay today we just taking through the upper limb now guys you guys have to like hear this thing okay first of all if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel all right you guys have to know this all right so um what did i want to say okay this is like a sweep through through the upper limb in general okay now i will come and take each bone of the upper limb all right i'll come and take each bone of the upper limb um singly all right so let's go um at the end of this this lecture what are you expected to learn you are expected to be able to list different bones in the upper limb all right and you should be able to list the characteristics and features of each bone. I don't know if you know me. And each of these bones, I will be dropping videos on each of these bones, all right? And you should be able to differentiate between the bones of the right and the left. If you see a bone, and how do you know that this bone is actually a bone of the left? How do you actually know that this bone is actually a bone of the uh, of the right, all right? And you should, you should be able to list um, the articulations of each bone, okay, this bone. Um, on the medial side, the clavicle uh, articulates with what? Or on the lateral side, the clavicle articulates with what? Okay, um, the sternum, all right? Um, okay, the manubrium, okay? Um, um, your 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 humerus um, articulates with the scapula using what the glenoid fossa you should be able to know all of this okay so now the bones the bones of the upper limb behold the bones all right so before we look at the bones of the upper limb um, we have to uh, look at the the, the 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 importance of bones in um the human body okay so um uh, you could see this image right here you could see this image right here um that's a thoracic cage the thoracic cage houses the heart and the lungs okay um what are the importances of bones we start from the from the left right bones support and protect organs of the body we don't need to really stress this um this this point do you know why because you could see the thoracic cage here. You could see the thoracic cage. It supports and it protects uh, various organs of the body. Um, what are the organs of the body? Uh, what, what organs um, does the thoracic cage um, support? The thoracic cage... Um, um, support and protect the heart and the lungs there are so many other tissues to um, organs too you could see stuff like um, the liver and all that okay so um, going to the next um, bones produce red and white blood cells now if we go back to our physiology we could actually get to know that okay not every bone um not at every stage does bone uh, pro uh, produce the red blood cell and the white blood cells okay bone store minerals that's a calcium 
bones come in variety of shapes and sizes and this is a characteristic not an importance okay and bones provide attachment for the muscles all right check like your um, brachiocephalic attaches where um, your brachial radialis attaches where and so on bones enable movement all right classification of bones bones are classified um using several um, criteria maybe the length uh, okay maybe the size maybe the shape and all that so we have long bones we have short bones we have flat bones irregular bones sesamoid bones long bones if we have the limb and the fingers your limb does um um your radius your ulna you have the humerus okay your short bones your wrist and ankles your wrist bones are what the carpals yeah you know she looks so pretty try to catch her right she's k for it looks lunate pretty pc form try to catch her you know you go on and on okay now uh, you could see this picture here you could see this picture sesamite bone has a um the sesamite bone um Sesame bone, uh, the, the patella bone is a sesame bone, okay? Um, the carpal is a short bone, that's your wrist bone, right? Um, the irregularly shaped bones, you have the, the vertebra, okay? You can't really say uh, which shape is, is a vertebra. We have the long bones, yeah, you know, that's a humerus and so on, okay? So, Talking about the upper limb, after talking about the importance of bones and all that, talking about the upper limb in in particular, all right? The upper limb in particular. So, the upper limb, you feel the upper limb should comprise of the head and everything, but this is just what makes the upper limb, all right? So, talking about the upper limb, the bones you are studying is the clavicle, the scapula, the acromion, the glenoid cavity, the scapula, the humerus, the radius on the lateral side, the ulna on the medial side, the carpals, the metacarpals, and phalanges. Okay. Okay. So um, the clavicle and the uh, the scapula are collectively called the pectoral guido you know um the clavicle uh attaches with the um the scapula through the um uh, this thing acromioclavicular um joint and this joint um, it makes up the it makes up the this thing what do they call it it makes up the pectoral guido right so take a look take a look you could pause the video take a look the pectoral guido oh. so uh what was the funny tip of this the pectoral guido is very light okay it allows the upper limb to have exceptional free movement okay because you see the clavicle is not like firmly born okay so uh, the pectoral guido allows the upper limb to have that free movement, that freestyle shape. You understand? It is formed by two bones posteriorly. Extend your hand and touch your back. When you touch your back, that's the scapula there. All right. Um, anteriorly, touch. Um, and let me see. How will I say? uh from your neck go laterally that s-shaped bone you see there that's a clavicle from your neck you go laterally the s-shaped bone there you see is the clavicle now um this is this is the rib cage this is the rib cage you could study these bones all right I will talk extensively on the rib cage when we are doing videos on thorax. Okay, we have the true ribs, we have the false ribs, we have the atypical ribs, we have the typical ribs. I will talk about the all 
the characteristics that actually make people call them these names okay so um nerves to the upper limb okay? you have the uh, yeah you have the nerves to the upper limb passing here and this is like um, um the brachial plexus I'll, I'll have a video on brachial plexus because i really love it okay they can actually set over uh, 50 questions just using the brachial plexus okay so as a medical student brachial plexus is so important so as a lumbar plexus so as a sacral plexus okay and general information long bones lying horizontally across the root of the neck these are general informations about clavicle okay clavicle is the only long bone uh, lying horizontally most long bones they are vertical okay but the clavicle lies horizontally hmm? it is subcutaneous what is subcutaneous it is just beneath the skin there is no muscle covering it okay um there's no medulla uh, cavity what is a medullary cavity that means the clavicle don't have all this bone marrow stuff do you understand there's no real cavity it's just like a solid bone you understand it has an appearance of an s shape yeah i told you i told you I told you see the clavicle here has an appearance of an s shape s shape all right um what are the functions of a clavicle it is a rigid support now funny enough you could see that um, the clavicle is not really firmly doesn't have support anteriorly doesn't have support posteriorly it's just linking uh, medially to the 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 manibrum okay and and laterally to the to the acromion of the scapula it's not really long linking it's just like touching but it provides a rigid support a rigid support from which the scapula and free upper limb are suspended okay it keeps them away from the trunk so that the arm has maximum freedom okay so uh, a scapula is like standing in between a mediator that helps to keep everything away so that the arms have maximum freedom that's why when you have a fracture of your of of of, of your of your clavicle your, your your arm actually goes in goes in like loop right it provides attachment for muscles okay it forms a boundary for of the cervical axillary canal that's for the protection of the neurovascular bundle of the upper limb. What is the neurovascular bundle of the upper limb? This is what we saw here. Neurovascular bundle. This neurovascular bundle, okay? The neurovascular bundle is the uh, brachial plexus. Now check this form first. All long bones are vertical except for the clavicle that is horizontal. I told you. The clavicle is clearly seen in thin people. Do you know why it is subcutaneous? It's just below the skin. There's no muscles covering it. You know, so if you thin, you have those um, shape coming on, 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 on your neck. Okay. Have those shape. Mostly you see that in HIV patients and everything. Um, clavicle are one of the cervical axillary components cervical axillary canal it contains the nerves that come from the neck and supply the upper limb you know these nerves you have the c5 c6 c7 c8 t1 okay i'll talk about these nerves when we discuss about the brachial plexus okay so now let's get more interactive Let's get more interactive. All right. So, talking about the clavicle, the clavicle has two ends, two surface. I won't really go deep on each bone. Do you know why? Because I'm making videos on each bone. So, let's go to my channel. You're gonna see it there. Has two ends. This, the sternal end, the acromial end, 
as we're talking you're looking at this picture for real so you don't miss out has two surfaces for real is 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 pointing on the anterior and the posterior okay the anterior is usually without is 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 like is the anterior is not rough do you know why it's not rough because there's no muzzle covering it all right but the posterior is rough do you know why because they had muzzle attaching to it okay it has three uh, articulations you could see um the acromial facet for articulating with the acromial um process of the scapula you have the sternal end for articulation with the sternal um, bone okay and you have the deltoid tuberosity that's attachment of the deltoid muscle impression for costal clavicular uh, and ligament the conoid tubercle the trapezoid line right so you see these are just like some unique features of the scapula two ends the sternal end and the acromial end okay um, the body the convex convex forward medially it is convex so and the medial part is more larger that's why you have it on the uh, we have it is too tall okay so let me say what they mean is okay the whole clavicle you divide it into three all right so the two the two third part like that's the longer side is the medial side okay um so the two surfaces the superior surface is smooth like i told you is just beneath the skin okay the inferior is rough and it is not like um attachment of muscle no it's attachment of ligaments okay this ligament bind it to the first rib just some little support okay the clavicle is basically just hanging articulations of the clavicle okay now let's go deep let's, let's just go deep okay if the clavicle is attaching to the sternum what do you say sternoclavicular is the clavicle is attaching to the acromion process what do you say acromioclavicular okay you can see glenohumera all these ones are down to the and the glenohumera and stuff they are just down to the humerus okay medially attached to the uh, to the to the sternum okay um which part of the sternum is that that's manubrium manubrium that's the manubrial part okay acromial clavicular the clavicle with the acromium of the scapula costal clavicular all right that's why we say the clavicle has a um, an impression for the close to clavicular um, ligament and these ligaments attach it to the the first rib so now let's see any bone that forms a joint is smooth because it is covered by a cartilage all right um fractures of the clavicle you know as medical students you actually know the anatomy of these bones and you actually get to know on um, the clinical part of these bones okay so now talking about the clavicle the clavicle is commonly fractured especially in children do you know why do you know why you force with your you fall down with your outstretched hand mostly when coming down from um, upstairs that's why in most days daycares in the school setting a, a daycare should be downstairs okay putting these children on an upstairs is endangering them because they could fall with an outstretched hand and since the clavicle don't have so much support the clavicle get fractured okay it may be pulled medially when it is fractured it is pulled medially by the adductors of the arm that means it sags towards your chest medially is towards laterally is away i'll make a video on um anatomical uh, anatomical uh positions okay so let's let's go the weakest part of of, of the clavicle is the junction that's when I said is the medial junction of the medial to third and the lateral one third. Okay, after fracture, the
the medial fragment is elevated by the sternomastoid uh, muscle okay uh, what you should know is um, it is rotated medially towards your 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 this thing your brain so this is just like um uh, you could like pause this video and look at this labeling for some time okay if you have a um, uh, a clavicular fracture where do you feel uh, it to be dragged it's be dragged to the media because medially you have most of those adductors those those pectoralis major and all that okay now you could observe that the brachial plexus passes underneath the clavicle and fractures to the clavicle can also cause nerve lesion on the brachial plexus so now guys let's move let's move let's move um going to the next bone that's the second bone of the upper limb all right you have the scapula okay now talking about the shape and the location looking at this just looking at this picture you see right here it looks triangular so from there we say that the, the scapula is triangular okay um what about the length you could count these ribs all right count these ribs know that the first thing you see here is the is the clavicle count these ribs one two three that's from top one two three four five six seven you could see that on the seventh rib is where you see the inferior angle of the scapula that's where the scapula ends so the the scapula extends from the second rib to the seventh rib okay mm, functions of the scapula right first of all you know that almost every bone gives muscular attachment so this is like a tip of um um knowing uh, the importance of any bone when they ask you you could it's like a free mark like in physics you say that most experiments um the error you know you see students writing error due to parallax they don't even know what is parallax so as science students i would like you to know all right but you should know that most bones they give muscular attachment okay um so it has a considerable degree of movement on the thoracic wall to enable the arm to move freely all right um the scapula all right the scapula has the glenoid fossa which articulates with the glenoid of the humerus all right and it gives a, a form of socket to the shoulder and surfaces of uh, this of, of of the of the scapula all right touching your back you could feel like okay posteriorly it is posteriorly convex all right this is what you see on your back and it is divided by what that line you see dividing that upper part and lower part is the the scapular spine okay the scapula spine divides the uh, infraspinous fossa and the supraspinous fossa now you could see they, they talk about them here uh, the supraspinous fossa is the smaller part above the scapula you see this small part there that's the supraspinous you know what is supraspinous supra it is up infra it is low now what he's just trying to say is okay the supraspinous fossa is smaller than the inferior fossa that's just the english that they are blowing there okay so concave if something is convex posteriorly if something is convex on the other side it should be concave on the other side so these are um learning techniques okay because you don't have to grab everything okay you some things that you know that okay when you grab them they actually infer for to you to know the next thing you actually let them be okay now unlike the clavicle and the scapula being a triangular bone has borders a triangle has borders i think in school we have the high hypotenuse you have um the <laughs> the adjacent side the other side i've forgotten about it it's been a while i did math though it's been a while i did math 
and if i would have gone into something like engineering i would have done well though right i'm good at math so now you could see the posterior view of the scapula you could see this uh, the, the, the the spine of the scapula dividing the infraspinous fossa and the supraspinous fossa all right so now the borders of the scapula you see the superior border you see the medial border you see the lateral border now you just take a look at the the labeling of the scapula you see the glenoid cavity articulation with the glenoid uh, process of the humerus you see the acromion articulates with the acromial end of the clavicle okay so most of these things you actually um the, the next bone gives you an idea of the next bone you're studying because the next bone links with the next bone so the the human body is not um a wake up and see stuff okay the human body is actually something that you learn by linking up um other things you have learned okay so um the clavicle the clavicle also has angles all right the borders the angles the angles are very easy to learn okay the inferior angle the superior angle now let's read what we have on this side three processes okay what are what is a process a process is like okay something coming out from somewhere then going out okay posteriorly we see the spinous process right anteriorly we see the acromion process we see the coracoid process the coracoid process is serves as an attachment to many muscles you see the coracobrachialis okay and three angles inferior lateral there's a lateral angle okay it's not labial then we have the, the hair okay so um when we're talking about the clavicle just a recap uh, we saw the clinical um correlations of the clavicle and we saw that um, when the clavicle is fractured the arm don't um, get to maintain that free movement it has when the clavicle is there because the clavicle is uh, is turning like a mediation between the hand and the chest and he helps to keep the arm away okay now coming down to the uh, the, the scapula um the clinical correlation to the scapula is a winged scapula okay a winged scapula um the medial border of your scapula protrudes okay and um when okay you say that uh, mm, the scapula is uh, the boxer's bone do you know why try throwing your wrist like you are blowing somebody pause this video try throwing your wrist like you're blowing somebody okay uh, you get to see that your clavicle moves forward okay so um the the, the 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 etiology is it is due to injury of the thoracic long nerve as in radial mastectomy do you know what is radial mastectomy they're trying to do some surgery on on on, on your breast maybe to remove breast cancer and because um the thoracic nerve passes um on the on the let me say near your breast okay they actually lesion the long thoracic nerve now the muscles attached on the medial side of the scapula are supplied by the long thoracic nerve so their um, sensation is lost okay because most of the scapula is well protected by muscles it is associ associated with the thoracic wall most of its fractures involve the protruding sub, uh, uh, subcutaneous acromion. Okay, now that is what I was just trying to tell you because um, it has muscles, unlike the clavicle that is sub subcutaneous. Now I want you guys to really um, um, think about this. Okay, um, as you are learning this anatomy. The immediate bone you are talking about always related with the bone you just studied, okay? Symptoms. The patient has difficulty in raising the arm. Do you know why? Because the scapula is the 
protruding bone it, it takes your arm out it gives you that strength so when it is affected um you you to lift your hand is so weak all right bones of the upper limb i think we are done with the pectoral giddle yeah. now if i could ask you what is the pectoral giddle I know some people might have forgotten. The pectoral giddle is the clavicle and the scapula. As simple as that. Those two bones, they form the pectoral giddle. All right? Um, going down to the arm. Going down to the arm. What is the bone of the arm? Just the humerus. The humerus is the bone of the arm. It is the typical long bone. It is the larger bone in the upper limb. All right. Um, the humerus has proximal end, the body, and the distal end. Now let me test you. What is proximal? I told you I'll get to like make a video on anatomical terms. I would have made it before this introductory video to upper limb, but. Um, I think um, soldiers move regardless, okay? Proximal is what is near you. Distal is what is far from you. That's why you see the proximal convoluted tubule in kidney. That's why you see the distal convoluted tubule in kidney, okay? And so, um, what's the picture of? Yeah, I'm trying to check the picture of a humerus. If you have a humerus, definitely the head is a proximal part. You have the body, then down you have the, um, down you have the, um, the head, neck, and the distal end. Okay, so the proximal end of the humerus, studying it, and the proximal end of the humerus have the neck. It has a head. It has a neck. It have the greater and lesser tubercle. It has an anatomical neck. It has a surgical neck. Now, talking about the head, it is formed by uh, one by three of a sphere. It articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula. The greater tuber uh, tubercle is the lateral margin. Lateral. Do you know what? Lateral. Away from the midline. From this picture, you could see that, okay? Putting this bone on the medial side, the head will articulate with the glenoid fossa of the scapula. So the head is on the medial side. So if the greater tubercle is opposite the head, then the greater tubercle is lateral, okay? Then the, le uh, the lesser tubercle projects anteriorly. The lesser tubercle is not medial. Check this. It is coming out of the bone. It projects anteriorly. Then the two tubercles are separated by an intertubercle groove. You see where they paint red? You see where they paint green? That space in between, that's your intertubercular groove. Anatomical neck is formed by a groove separating the head from the tubercles. Anatomical neck. I hope you see that. Surgical neck now. So it has two necks. The upper one is anatomical. The down one is surgical. You get to know why the names is called like that. Okay. Now just a recap. The greater tubercle is opposite the head, so it is lateral. The lesser tubercle is protruding from the bone, so it is anterior. What is anterior? Anterior is like on the front. Okay. I'll make a video on terminology. Death, 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 death. Um. Okay. Shafts of the humerus, you could see the labeling, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, head of humerus, anatomical neck, surgical neck, see the tuber uh, delta tuberosity, near the delta tuberosity you have the radial groove, huh? where there's a passage of the radial artery, okay, so when you fracture um, the body of the shaft, you know, you fracture the radial artery too. Okay, delta tuberosity. You know, if they give you these bones so that you you, you know the side the, the side, just know that the head always po uh, points medially. Okay, the head always points medially. If an examiner give you um, the humerus to talk about it, you know the first thing you're going to do 
you are going to hold it in the anatomical position before you start talking all right so the delta tuberosity is a rough elevation lateral for the attachment of the deltoid muscle okay so the delta tuberosity is an attachment for the deltoid muscle so most of these things they actually carry the names of the muscles that insert in them or the nerves that pass through them then the radial groove that we've been talking here see the use it runs obliquely obliquely is like what diagonal okay draw a square then join two opposite um, points of the square that's your diagonal okay it lodges the radial nerve and vessels okay then the distal end of um, the humerus okay we have studied the the uh, uh, the proximal end we studied the body the body just having just the radial and the deltoid tuberosity okay so now I'm studying the distal end, that's where it articulates with the ulna and the radius. That's you leaving the arm into the forearm of the body, okay? So the distal end of the humerus, it widens as the sharp medial and the lateral supracondyle ridge and ends in the medial and lateral epicondyles. They provide muscular attachment, okay? So, um... Just a quick tip here, anteriorly, the chocolate. Please, anything I'm talking about, always try to pause the video and visualize it in the picture, okay? Because as anatomy students, that's why your atlas is useful, okay? Because when you are actually reading something and you are visualizing it instantly, you actually get, it actually gets to stick more, okay? So talking about the chocolate, the trochlear is media for the articulation of the ulna. Capitulum. If the ulna is a medial bone, the radial, the radius is a lateral bone. So if the trochlear is medial and it attaches the ulna, the capitulum will be lateral and it will at, uh, uh, attach for the radius. So most of these things you just have to like grab one, okay? then you know the name of the other one but you know that okay if i know this one then it will inform me to know this one inference knowledge, uh, inference knowledge is like okay it's like a very fast way of learning if you have two things that are directly opposite each other you actually get to grab the characteristics of of the other one all okay then um the other one you just have to grab the name but you know that the characteristics of this one is opposite to this one uh, that's the very fast way of learning. The coronoid process, it is anterior above the trochlea. The radial process is above the capitulum. Coronoid above trochlea. Radial above the capitulum. Okay, guys. This is like the hardest place to grab in in, 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 in upper limb because um, you could see that... Um, these labelings here are, are somewhat complicated and the name so different, okay? Have the medial epicondyl. If you look at your arm, the, uh, the juncture of your forearm and um, your arm, you could see like something protruding medially. That's your medial epicondyl. Above the medial epicondyl is the supra uh, medial epicondyl. It's not labeled though, okay? So let's go to the explanation. Um, a V-shaped indentation that's between the trochlea and the, tro uh, the, 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 the capitulum is a fossa. Uh, okay, okay, no, 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 no. They are trying to explain um, what is the name of um, a process and a fossa. So a process is a V-shaped indentation. A fossa is a hollow place. The notch is not complete, but the fossa is complete, okay? And both of them act as the lock of the joint, right? If um, mm, a fossa and a notch are coming together, a fossa is like a shallow, like shallow, uh, shallow indentation. Then a notch is like 
protruding out outward so if the two of them come together they will actually form a joint okay then articulations of the humerus like i told you when talking about a bone you talk about a bone it is articulating with anteriorly and inferiorly now anteriorly the humerus articulates with the scapula okay through so many ligaments that joint is is strong but it's it, it had to be joined by a um, ligament so that it permits so much movement so you have the coraco humeral ligament from the names you have to um, infer like where the ligament is coming from and where it is going to coraco humeral that means it is jointing on the coracle process of the scapula and is jointing on the humeral. Okay, you have the synovial sheet, you have the transverse humeral um, ligament, that's where the synovial sheet is passing under. Okay, we have the middle glenohumeral ligament. Okay, we have the upper glenohumeral, uh, not upper. Okay, you don't use upper in anatomy, you use superior. So you have the inferior gleno. So you could just say, okay, we have three glenohumeral ligaments. This is how smart I want you guys to be, okay? If you have something that is um, has so many parts and the, 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 the parts are separated by media, inferior, just catch the name and know that it has all the side. Just know that, okay, the glenohumeral ligament has the inferior and the superior part. Then he also has the media part, okay? You don't have to catch all these names one by one. As a medical student, you have so much things to read, so you derive so many study methods, okay? The shoulder, and the shoulder is um, uh, a combination of the head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula. The elbow, the elbow is combination of the lower end of the humerus. Now, the lower end of the humerus have two processes that's the trochlear and the capitulum i told you the trochlear articulates with the ulna the capitulum articulates with the what the radius all right so i love this going into um the clinical correlation of the humerus okay now fractures of the humerus mostly occurs on the surgical neck or the body of the humerus now on the surgical neck it's especially in elder people when the density of your bone is being lost and any uh, small thing can actually fracture your bone and the body of the humerus can be fractured by a direct blow okay somebody hits you directly to the body of the humerus it can cause a fracture and the fracture results from falling on the arm okay direct falling okay and let me say like you're falling from a tree then you actually get to grab a branch you actually get to like put your the whole weight of your body on your arm you could fracture it okay in younger people fractures of the greater, greater tubercle results from falling on the hand when the arm is abducted what is abduction what is adduction okay so i know we, we really got a long way to go on um on this medical terminology so i'll actually make a video on it nerves affected in the fracture of the humerus okay um the radial nerve is located in the spinal groove so if the body of the humerus is fractured the radial nerve is affected don't just cram okay don't just cram know why this thing is happening and if they wake you up in 10 years time to tell us why still know why okay the surgical neck it lodges the surgical uh the, the axillary nerve so if there's a fracture in the surgical neck in which set of people do we say the surgical neck is so much common okay we said the surgical neck is much more common in the old people because of what because of osteoporosis what is osteoporosis is when the density 
there is like drop in your dense the density of your bone your bone is not as strong because of age okay the medial condyle the ulnar nerve causes on the medial condyle that's why they call it the funny nerve when you touch your medial condyle you actually get to feel some and some time and some funny sensations okay now we are done with the arm we are going to the forearm um the forearm is formed by the two muscles ulna is media radius is, is is lateral that's the first thing you're supposed to know okay now they said the size the ulna is longer the radius is shorter that's why the ulna has the radial tuberosity because okay the ulna is like okay my guy you you are so short so let me support you okay so the tall support the short okay so i'm um, talking about the ulna bone i'm not happy the the image is so far because as i'm talking you are supposed to be viewing the image so we'll be scrolling up and down Ulna has um, the olecranon process. Olecranon process is proximal. All right. The coronoid process is anterior. Okay. The tuberosity of the ulna is um, inferior. Um, it articulates with the trochlear. That's what I told you. Yeah. Okay. I told you before. Um, the trochlear process of the humerus articulates with the ulna. All right, told you. The distal end, small and rounded. Uh, you know all this. Um, you should know all these characteristics because of exams, though. Um, not re not general exams. Like, let me say, steeple chase and viva. Okay. In essay, nobody will be asking you to describe all this. Okay. They will ask you about the injuries to these bones, okay? Then the radius. Which side is the radius? We told you it's lateral. The radius articulates with which process of the humerus. You should be able to combine your knowledge together. You don't learn so that your knowledge are islands, okay? Combine your knowledge into the United States of America. You know, United States of America is made up of independent states, okay? So when you learn about um, the clavicle, combine it to the scapula. When you learn about the scapula, combine it to the humerus. When you learn about the humerus, combine it to the forearm. How many muscles are, how many bones are in the forearm? We have the, the radius and the ulna, okay? When you learn about the radius and the ulna, combine it with your carpal bones, when you learn about the carpal bones, metacarpals, your phalanges, okay? These are the pictures. All of them, they have the grooves that actually take in um, the, 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 the notches, okay? Chocolate notch. Okay, no, they have the notches, okay? <laughs> what am I saying? They have the notches that take in the processes from the humerus, okay? It's a picture of your what we call this bone. This is the ulna. Do you know why it is the ulna? It has the olecranon process. The olecranon process is your elbow. Alright. How do you know this bone is radius? Okay. The head. The radial notch. Articulations of the radius and the ulna. Now, I just want you to relate something. The radius and the ulna are actually like um, same thing with the tibia and the fibula in the lower limb. So as we go on, as we go on making videos, okay, you guys should get to see all this, all right? Um, the interosseous membrane combines these two uh special bones together all right the interosseous uh, membrane all right the interosseous membrane has um, an aperture for passage of the interosseous artery all right then the distal radio ulnar joint the wrist joint all right 
the interosseous membrane the two bones are connected by a flexible membrane the distal end of the radius um, articulates with the, the elbow bone right um, no distal end of the humerus articulates with um, the prosma ends okay if you have two separate bones coming after one another the distal end of this one is actually the proximal end of that one i think i've put in some knowledge into some people all right fractures of the ulna you know when you fall then you fall with your outstretched hand it's the same thing all right there's a coles fracture the coles fracture is actually called the dinas fork um, deformity right it is more common in women after the middle age because of osteoporosis that's when your bone is no longer thick as before because the, uh, the radius and ulna are firmly bonded by the interosseous membrane a fracture of one bone is act, uh, associated with the dislocation of the nearest joint okay so one, one when one bone and um, you know um, the radius and the ulna articulate both um, superiorly and inferiorly so if there's a fracture in one bone at least the superior joint or the inferior joint should be dislocated um, is a typical yeah um, college fracture uh, results from dosiflexion of the hand dosiflexion is like uh, bringing the back of your hand bringing um, the back of your hand towards uh, bringing the back of your hand towards your forearm okay that's dorsiflexion okay so um we don't call less fracture so we up to the wrist now the carpal bones i told you the mnemonics for um grabbing the carpal bones you can see here here is um sally left the party to take Katy home it's pretty simple right but to me i would say um she looks too pretty try to catch her the same thing scaphoid lunate triquetral pisiform trapezium trapezoid capitate hamate fractures of the scaphoid right so um this is like okay among these um carpal bones which one easily gets fractured all right so the most commonly fractured one is the scaphoid is the most commonly fractured carpal bone is the most common injury of the wrist how could it be fractured the fracture result as a fall on the palm okay falling with outstretched hand that's like dosiflexion too okay that uh, the same cause of college fracture um uh, the pain along the lateral side of the wrist Union of the bone may take several months because of poor blood supply to the proximal part, okay? The scaphoid has um, the, the blood supply to the lateral side, so the union is usually low. Now, on the last bones of the hand, we have the metacarpals and the phalanges, okay? We have five metacarpals, each on each finger, all right? Um, the metacarpal has a base a shaft shaft is also known as the body like we we're talking about the humerus the metacarpals are just like okay smaller humerus i don't know if you understand metacarpals are smaller humerus okay and um it has the base the shaft and the the head if if they tell you to differentiate between the base and the head what will you say as a good anatomical student you will go like this okay the base is proximal the body is middle body or shaft and the head is distal okay that's how you speak um to teachers professionally you don't you don't start saying okay the head is up and the, the base is down no as an anatom anatomical student you don't use um 
of this thing terminologies like that no you get to like speak the anatomical knowledge we know okay so um going to we are done with the metacarpals we said there are five they have the base the shafts and the head going to the phalanges okay the phalanges are three on each finger except the thumb they are two on the thumb okay um the phalanges um just like the metacarpals they have the base they have the body and they have the shaft okay remember your thumb only has two phalanges articulation of the wrist okay we have the capo metacarpal now without looking at the explanation capo metacarpal that's it you know between the carpals and the metacarpals can you see like you could actually like make out like half of the explanation just from the word you called okay metacarpal phalanges that's the articulation between the metacarpals and the phalangeal joints okay then interphalangeal joints okay this is now leaving um the metacarpal area into the phalangeal area interphalangeal what is inter in your secondary school they will say inter spot inter house spot okay this is within okay so interphalangeal this is within the phalanges okay you have the distal interphalangeal joints proximal okay then the wrist joints okay this is the articulation between the distal end of the radius all right with the proximal row of the carpal bone proximal row forms the wrist joint the distal row forms what carpal metacarpal joint okay summary now the summary let me just get to expand it then take it slowly the head Okay, talking about the humerus, head, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, carpal bones, metacarpals, phalanges, talking about the hand, the wrist has the carpal bones, the forearm has a radius and ulna, the pectoral guido is um, what and what, is the clavicle and the scapula, alright? The scapula has a superior border. Medial border, lateral border, angle, superior angle, inferior angle, surfaces. The scapula has the convex surface, the concave surface. Okay. Articula articulation of the clavicle. Okay. I told you that medially the clavicle articulates with the sternum. Which part of the sternum? The manibrum. Okay. Laterally, um, the scapula articulates with um, the, the clavicle articulates with the scapula. Which part of the scapula? Acromioclavicular. All right. The clavicle has two surfaces. Um, the anterior surface is, is 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 smooth. Do you know why it's smooth? I told you. Pause this video and think. It doesn't have no muscular or ligament attachment okay um the inferior border the inferior surface is rough okay ends the ends of the clavicle we have the medial end that's the sternum side okay we have the lateral end that's the acromion side so this is so simple and beautiful right beautiful bones of the upper limb see? so beautiful you don't need to worry so much about this um don't need to worry so much about this um this video do you know why because um worry about this image because this whole video is just like um uh the whole video is just like a summary to all this okay so um thank you guys for watching this video all right this is just like a video on osteology only. I will be making a video on the muscle attachment of the upper limb. 
I will also be making a video on the venous supply of the upper limb. I will be making a video on the nervous supply of the upper limb. I will be making a video on the um, lymphatic drainage of the upper limb. Okay.